Now, unit impulse is another important signal in signal sound systems. We will find that the response for a unit impulse, response of unit impulse, can completely define a linear time invariant system. We will see what a linear time invariant system is in later videos. So, impulse forms a very important class of signals in signal sound systems. Now, let's remove this. Here, what I have is a unit impulse. Now, this one is indicative of the area of the signal. Okay, we will see what it is. Now, the way in which this impulse signal is defined is really interesting. Now, we can see the value of this impulse, unit impulse is zero when t is not zero. So, that is first equation. And we denote unit impulse by delta of t. So, delta of t is equal to zero when t is not zero. So, this is part one. Now, the question is how we can define this impulse at t equal to zero. We have said that its area has to be one. So, what we do is instead of defining it directly here, we will write it in the form of an integral. We know that area under the curve is given by integral minus infinity to infinity delta of t dt. This is the area under the curve and it has to be 1. So, this is how a unit impulse is normally defined. Now, there are many ways but it should represent two important facts. One, it has to be 0 when t is not 0 and the area under this signal should be equal to 1. So, there are many ways to define this but these two concepts should always remain. So, this is the definition of unit impulse. That is delta of t equal to 0 when t is not equal to 0 and the area under the impulse function is 1. Now, we will see this function a little bit in detail because this is really important when it comes to understanding linear time invariant systems. The impulse response of LTA systems, if you want to understand it, you should know about unit impulse and its properties. Now, we will go ahead and see how we get to this conclusion here. To start with, let's consider this signal here. Let's say this signal is x of t. Remember, this is not our unit impulse signal. Now, let's assume that its width is delta and its height is 1 by delta. Now, the area under this curve using the integral minus infinity to infinity x of t into dt. In this case, we can calculate it really easily. That is the area under this curve. So, it has a width delta and a height 1 by delta. So, the area is delta into 1 by delta which is equal to 1. So, one property of unit impulse is satisfied by this signal that is unit area. The area under the curve is 1. Now, the next part is that its value everywhere except at t equal to 0. Let's say we reduce this delta. So, we will reduce this delta and when this delta approaches to 0, we can say that we have got an unit impulse. Let's say we reduced delta by half. Let's say the new width here is delta by 2. That means the height has to be increased in order to maintain unit area. That means its height has to be increased so that it should be 2 by delta. Now, still we have got the unit area. Let's check it quickly. That is delta by 2 into 2 by delta, we will get 1 here. Again, we have unit area. So, when this width decreases, the height has to increase in order to maintain the unit area. So, when this width tends to 0, the height should go to infinity. So, that's what our unit impulse is. Let's see the unit impulse again. Now, this arrow is indicative of the fact that it tends to infinity. Now, this 1 indicates the area under the curve. That is the area under impulse. Now, let's take a look at a scaled impulse. So, this is delta of t. Now, let's take a look at phi delta of t. So, it has to be like this. Let's say this is equal to some y of t. So, this means y of t is equal to 0 for t not 0 and integral minus infinity to infinity y of t dt has to be 5 here. 
So this is how an impulse and a scaled impulse will look like. Now let's go ahead and see some of the very important properties of impulse functions 